Joining me right now is a man who is headlining at Madison Square Garden on the very first Rock Nation boxing show. He's going to be taking on Dusty Hernandez, Harrison, Tommy the Razor Raynon joins me. Tommy, how are you doing? I'm good. Yourself? Hey, not too bad at all. And hey, you, you know, you become a celebrity overnight. You're in the uh, the executive suite at Knicks games. You're all over the place now. Uh, what has this uh, this press tour been like for you? Honestly, um, it's been a little it's been a little hectic. I um, mean, it's always hectic fight time because I work a you know full time regular job. So my my uh, my time is always you know very little. When I'm getting ready for a fight, I'm working full time and I'm training, and then my other obligations. You know, it's it gets tough. So this one honestly has been a little tougher, only because uh, at my job the person that I supervised uh, ended up resigning about a month ago, no two weeks notice or anything. So we have not been able to replace her yet. So I've been working crazy hours, kind of doing the work of two people at my job. Then obviously I'm training double time for this fight. And then you know there's been a lot of press obligations. So I uh, I've just haven't had much time for anything the last five weeks. It's been nuts. So I mean, real life doesn't stop for boxing, obviously. So you haven't had a time. You even even yeah. had the time to really enjoy what's been going on. Uh, not really. <laughs> not really. It's, been, it's just been nonstop, man. I wake up and I got 20 messages to answer and places to be and, you know, this and that. And at, the end, and at night, I still got to go to work. So it's been nuts, you know. So uh, on one hand, it's been cool. On the other hand, I can't wait to have my, my life back for a little while after the fight. Well, I mean, let's talk about the fun part, and that's going to be uh, getting in the ring. And and the fact that you get to headline at Madison Square Garden, which is, is something that's been so sacred in the world of boxing for for many decades, you know, since boxing was, was televised, since anyone had any eyes on it, that was kind of the, the mecca. You knew that you made it when you were headlining, when you are fighting at MSG. That part must be thrilling for you, especially given that you grew up in the area. Absolutely. I mean, I fought at the Garden twice, so I mean, that was when I first turned pro. That was one of my uh, my my goals was to fight at Madison Square Garden. Uh, you know, you take the train into I'm from Long Island, so you take the train, you get off at Penn Station, which is of course connected to Madison Square Garden, and you look up and you see that you know how many times a year I look up and I look at the Garden. And I say I'm going to fight that one day. So when that finally happened in 2010, it was amazing. Uh, besides the fact that how many times I've been there for fights, for concerts, for even wrestling events as a kid, so the Garden's a special place for for most New Yorkers. So it was amazing to fight there twice, and uh, and now, you know, uh, to main event there is, is, you know, I'll be honest with you, it's not even something I ever really dreamed about. I was content and humbled by the fact that I even got to fight there a couple of times, and I never dreamed of fighting main event there. So you never thought this was ever going to happen. I mean, there was, you know, especially considering, you know, you took some losses early in your career. You've, up until, you know, this morning when it was sent out, you've been kind of managing your own career. This wasn't even a consideration that it was ever possible. Um, as far as a main event at Madison Square Garden, probably not, no. Uh, you know, uh, no. I mean, I knew that I, I've been lucky enough to fight on a lot of big parts and there are a lot of world champions and big stars in boxing, but as far as actually main eventing at the Garden, no. And I, I told the story a couple of times, but uh, I was actually offered the fight with Harrison uh, like six months ago on the Golovkin Gill on the card, which was in the big room. And, uh, and I would love to fight in the big room. Both of my uh, times that I fought at the Garden were in the theater. And uh, it would have been great. And um, he ended up, of course, fighting on that card. He fought an eight-rounder at one. But uh, I turned the fight down because there was no TV involved. Uh, so in the main event, the co main event on TV, so I'd be fighting him off TV. And uh, to fight a young prospect that's undefeated off TV with the amount of experience I have just didn't make sense. It really wasn't about the money as much as it was about just, you know, the exposure and, you know, and just why, why am I going to fight a guy at this point when we have almost 50 fights or something between us and do it off TV? So I'm very glad that I held out because it couldn't work out better with the fact that it, now we're fighting in the main event instead of on the undercard. Now we're getting the exposure and the TV and everything else that goes along with it. Well, I, I'm going to get to the fight in a, in a second, but you know, you brought up the fact that you, you handled those nega- the, those negotiations effectively on your own. Now you're with, uh, with Greg Cohen. How did that all come about? And I guess that must be a relief that finally you're going to have someone looking after you. Well, we'll see how it plays out. I mean, it just, it, I've had a relationship with Greg Cohen for, for you know, I fought from him in 2012 for the first time. I fought from three times. My last fight was for him uh, when I won the USBO title. So um, I've always had a good, uh, friendly relationship with Greg Cohen. But uh, this fight at the Garden, you know, um, I mean, I got the, the fight was coming my way anyway. As far as as I said, it was offered to me six months ago. I knew I was on uh, on Dusty Harrison's radar or his people's radar, so I knew I would get offered the fight again. Uh, as I said, you know, I'm getting the absolute most I could possibly get out of it, as, as is Dusty, because now we're main eventing, you know, on TV and Rock Nation's first show, which uh, I think is a better overall look than 
you know, on on the call where we're not going to be televised on the Garofka. So, so uh, basically, you know, uh, leading into this fight, you know, me and Greg had some talks, and I was kind of thinking about, you know, signing with him, but doing so after the fight. I really didn't want to get too distracted or anything, but, you know, we worked it out actually today. We worked it out today, and uh, and that's it. So one way or another, I was probably going to end up fighting a majority of the fights for the rest of my career with Greg Cullen. It's just kind of made it official. All right, well, let's talk about the, the fight that you do have uh, this weekend against Dusty Hernandez-Harrison, um, a, a guy who's obviously a, a, a heavily touted prospect, someone who people have a, a lot of great hopes for, but also someone who on ESPN early last year against Michael Bellassi, uh, you know, created some doubters for himself based on his performance in that fight, the fact that he was dropped and it didn't look overly impressive have you been kind of pinpointing that fight uh, as kind of the blueprint for what maybe you can do this weekend? Well, listen, I mean, I'm certainly, you know, I'm, I'm overall more talented than uh, Blossy, the guy that, uh, that ended up dropping that fight and gave a little bit of a hard time. But uh, uh, this, 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 it depends how you look at it, too. you got to also remember that Dusty got off the canvas, didn't panic, stayed composed, stayed relaxed, and went right back to business and won, won the decision no problem. So, um... Did he slip by? He got caught with a shot. Sure, it happens. It can happen to anybody. Um, it's not like he was upset or defeated or exposed or anything of that nature. So um, I watched that fight. You know, I know that uh, the Blossy took the fight on short notice. And, again, he's not the most talented guy in the world. And, sure, he is a southpaw, so there are some similarities. I definitely think that overall I, I, uh, I have a lot more diversity to my game and, and, and more of a skill set than he does. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a fight that I watched live. And then I watched, obviously, recently just to get, you know, a better meter as far as, a southpaw against Dusty, but as I've told people, you know, what you look at on video and what happens, what it looks like in the ring, it's two different things, so I don't spend too much time studying video, you know, and banking on something happening that might not happen, you know, so, uh, or a guy doing something because, you know, certain fighters, you might expect a guy to move and box, and he comes at you aggressively, you can't bank on that, or, or vice versa, you might expect somebody to be aggressive with you, and now he's moving and boxing, and, and you know, you got to be prepared for anything, so, um, you know, to answer your question, I don't think he was. I don't think he was exposed. I think you know, sure. Uh, you know, he created some doubt, or sure. But you know what? Again, he overcame the adversity. He won the fight, and uh, and he's continued to you know have a very good career thus far. And it's my job Saturday to you know do everything I can to, I guess, further expose him. Well, and, and a lot of people would and are considering this to be uh, the toughest test of his career thus far. On the flip side, do you consider Dusty to be the toughest test of your career thus far? Uh, of course. I mean, listen, uh, you know, I said, you know, on, uh, is he, you know, is he the tough on paper? And I'm sure in reality he's going to be the toughest fight of my career. But I said, you know, the opposite end of the spectrum is, you know, uh, I think that I am definitely on paper and, uh, and I'm going to be in reality Friday night the toughest fight of his career. So it kind of works both ways. Um, so, you know, it's a step-up fight for me, but it's, it's definitely a step-up fight for him, too. Um, I'm sure he's going to be mentally and physically ready for it, um, as will I, and, you know, may the best man win. Now, I know that uh, in camp you've been working uh, extensively with with Chris Algieri, who obviously has had, uh, you know, a lot of success recently, uh, d- despite the uh, uh, the downfalls against Manny Pacquiao. He was still on the biggest stage, made a, a whole lot of money, and made a whole lot of fans in the process. Uh what is your relationship like with Chris, and, and what has he brought to the table for you, uh, and maybe any advice that he's given heading into this fight? Well, I've known Chris since he turned pro, or prior to him turning pro, actually, uh, you know, uh, when he was getting ready for his pro debut, it was the first time I actually ever sparred him, and I can tell you right off the bat that he was, you know, special the first time I got in the ring with him. Uh, Chris is a very good fighter, he's a good guy. Uh, I actually only sparred with him once for this fight. Chris was away on vacation, and... Uh, you know, Chris is similar to me. I mean, I don't spar in between, in between fights much. I, I preserve myself. You know, I don't want to, you know, no reason to take shots if you don't have a fight coming up. And, you know, and Chris is similar in that regard. So I had, uh, especially coming up with the Packer fight, so I had sent him a text message last week. I said, you know, it would be great if I could get a session with you before my fight. Um, so let me know. And he was away uh, on vacation in Florida. So he said, you know, I should be able to do that. I'm not going to be back until uh, New Year's Day, though. So I sent him a follow-up text a couple of days later. I said, is Saturday good for you? Because, you know, that would work. And, you know, he obliged right away, and we met up at the gym, and, you know, we got a good solid eight rounds, which was my last uh, sparring session. And uh, and Chris is just excellent work. He's just a, such a unique style. And, uh, of course, he's a long, tall guy. He's got experience now. Confidence was never an issue with this kid at any stage of, the career, of his career. So but losing to Pacquiao, you know, that doesn't affect Chris Algieri whatsoever. He's going to go out there, and he's going to uh, – 
still beat Chris Algier. He's always been as far as a fighter goes, and he'll, he'll improve, and you'll see the improvements in his next fight. So um, anytime you get work with a, with a world champion, a former world champion, a world-class fighter, I mean, it's you know it doesn't get much better than that. So that's, that's what's going to be, you know, that work is always very beneficial. Yeah, and, and, and it seems like there's no shortage of that for you uh, in New York, especially now uh, with all these cards coming to Barclays Center and now back at, at MSG as well. Uh, both with the amount of events coming there and the fighters who are flourishing right now, it seems to be a real boom period for New York boxing. Not that it ever went away, but this this era in particular seems to be particularly successful. Yeah, it's a combination of a couple of things, of course. It's the arrival of the Barclay Center, which is, you know, brought big time back, boxing back to Brooklyn, and uh, and fighters have a big stage to perform on of the Madison Square Garden, which only does a couple of shows a year. So that's been big. And also, um, if you look at the overall boxing scene on Long Island in general right now, but not, I mean, it's gotten a lot more attention with Chris Algieri kind of winning world championship and leading the way. But there are just so many good fighters on Long Island right now. I mean, the, the same night that I'm fighting on uh, Fox Sports on Friday, um, a friend of mine, Patrick Day, who's undefeated, is fighting, uh, fighting on Showtime that same night, and he's from Long Island. So you're going to have two Long Islanders fight on two different networks the same night, one on the East Coast and one on the West Coast. And... Uh, it's just there's a lot of talent on Long Island right now. I know the guy I trained with, Quidditch Elvin, has a, uh, a big fight coming up on ESPN in February. He just won a WBC uh, uh, Continental title uh, last week. And, uh, you know, Sean Monaghan, of course, is uh, is doing his thing. He's 23 and 0 now. He's ranked like number three, three in the world at light heavyweight. There's just so much talent and so many good fighters on Long Island right now. And uh, the Barclays Center uh, definitely has helped the New York boxing scene, as has the Paramount, which is the venue on Long Island where a lot of these guys came out of, like Chris Algieri, uh, Chris Elvin, and uh, a, a lot of a, a lot of prospects on Long Island. So, you know, the New York scene is strong right now. Well, we're looking forward to uh, your big night at MSG uh, on Friday. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, best of luck, and we hope to get you back on here soon. Absolutely. Appreciate it.